Hello, this is Chris Duncan at Find Your Focus Photographic Education, and today we're going to talk about adding some dimension to your landscape images by throwing in a sky or adding an additional sky to your image. So here is the finished one that I've already done. Uh, I have added a few elements to this, the, the birds as well as the sky. Um, just to give you an idea of where we started and where we're ending up today. This was our starting image, which is a nice, it's a nice scenic spot. And I just wanted to give it a little more interest and depth. And that's when I chose to add in the sky and do a few finishing techniques that we'll discuss in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to think about when you're going to do this is look at your perspective, your lens choice. And I can tell that this was photographed with a wide angle lens. For one, I know that because I took the image. Uh, but two, I can tell that the barn seems so much bigger than the mountains. It's brought forward. A wide angle lens will separate foreground from background a lot. So this wasn't really a telephoto. This was probably a 35, maybe a 50 at the most. So when I'm picking out a sky, I want one that's shot at a similar perspective because um, it all has to be believable and it has to match. Another thing when I'm looking at adding a sky element is making sure my light direction matches or the sky matches the time of day. So these skies are from Layer Cake, which they have lots of different clouds and different skies you can use, and they're organized by time of day and kind of puffy or wispy or high clouds and that sort of thing. So I looked at my high clouds folder and found this sky that also looks like it was photographed with the wide angle lens because of the keystoning effect and the way it, it falls away from me. So I felt this was a good choice. So let's go and get started and build this image together. So here is my original image. Uh, it's had some raw conversion factors in a crop. What I want to do now though is I need to clip out the sky so I can drop in my new one. So I'm going to use my magic wand, hit W for that, and just start clicking on this sky area. And I shift click on any of the areas that didn't fill. And it looks like it did a pretty good job. Now I'm going to zoom in to make sure it didn't go anywhere I don't want it to go. And it didn't get anything, it got everything. So it took a little bit of that. So this may take a little bit. I'm going to change my tolerance and shift click there. There we go. That's nice. It looks like everything is covered where it needs to be. So the next thing I'm going to do is invert my selection because now I have the sky selected. I want to keep the foreground and remove the sky. So I'm going to Command Shift I and it reverses the selection. And then I'm going to click my Refine Edge button at the top. And I'm going to get this little dialog box. And I have these settings with a radi Smart Radius on, about 15 pixels, Smooth at 1, Feather at 0.5, Contrast at 8%, and Shift Edge minus 15. That shifts everything into the image and it helps remove some haloing that may happen. And my output, you want to make sure you have new layer with layer mask. That way if you need to come back and refine this mask, it'll do that. You have the option to do that and plus it gives you new layers so you always have your background layer available. Now I'm going to hit the reveal layer and we're going to zoom in because the problem area is going to be this tree because my selection wasn't in that tree. So I'm going to use E to collect this, this um, the selection brush and you want to click in the area you want to get rid of so that would be the blue we'll start in the blue and just drag around this open area of these leaves in this tree where that sky is peeking through and it's going to do its little run it's going to think and it should have removed it now I can hit W to show it on white and you can see that it's really done a nice job masking that let's kind of show our black and white layer that really does a nice job I think I can clean that up just a little bit, so I'm going to run it one more time, and you will kind of see this change as it selects more of that blue out of there. There you go. That's looking good. And I'm adding a blue sky, so this isn't as critical. If I'm trying to do hair around a model or something like that, then this can get really tricky, and this tool is great for that. So this is kind of a simple, simplified version of using that. So there I hit my foreground image, and have my background, it's on a new layer, and I'm going to drag in my sky. So I'm going to go to my sky image, and I'm just going to simply use the move tool, hold shift when I drop it so it centers it, oh, and it's really huge. I will do command T to transform, because that is way bigger than I need it. So let's just transform that thing in there. Sometimes I'll do some perspective shifts, and I'm just going to bring it there, and now make sure that is behind 
And now I have the chance to move it around where I like it. And I really like there because it's going, it needs to go from top to bottom, have that wide angle look. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that positioning. Now one thing you want to think about when you're doing the sky is your sky images, your clouds, are properly exposed. But they're exposed for the sky. We all know that when we photograph a scene that has the earth element and the sky element, the sky always appears brighter because it is brighter than the earth. So the sky won't be properly exposed. Now there's correct exposure and there's proper exposure. The sky is properly exposed for just the sky. It's not the correct exposure for the scene. So there's a two ways we can combat that. What I'm going to do is now turn my background layer back on so that blue will help bleed through from my original image since I had a nice clean blue sky. I want to lower the opacity of this sky probably to about 60-70% and see where I like it. To me it kind of starts looking muddy because that background layer is coming through. Okay, so I will combat that by duplicating my sky layer by command J and now doing a screen blend mode. And that's going to brighten everything. So now my exposure looks accurate for the scene. And I might need to adjust this a little bit, the screen mode. And you can kind of play with, um, with these opacities of these layers to what you think fits best. I think that looks really good. It looks really believable. So now our exposures seem correct. Okay. Now the foreground seems a little hot for me, so what I do to combat that is I go back to my foreground layer, this layer right here, and I will duplicate it with Command J and set that to a multiply blend mode. Of course it darkens it a lot, and then I'll use my opacity slider to bring that down um, just a little bit so now I kind of have value tones that make sense in the image with, an ex with a sky that matches the scene and with a foreground that matches the scene. And really that's it. I could stop there. Um, but one thing I like to do, and I've learned this technique from Richard Sturdivant, who's a master at composites, and this is not nearly as complicated as he does, but it's some of the similar process, is I need to treat the entire image, all the layers, with the same finishing technique just to help them blend a little bit better. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a warming photo filter and just put a warming filter over it. So now the whole scene gets that adjustment. They all get that warming filter. So it helps blend them together a little more believable. Okay. And another thing I like to do is add a levels layer above it. And I'm just going to make this a little denser. But it makes both layers a little denser. So it's, a, it's doing my whole image together. And I kind of like where that's going there too. So that looks good. And maybe a little contrast here. And we can add a curves layer. I can bring those white and black values down. Just a smidge. There we go. And this is all really subjective and personal taste. I think the key to this tutorial is knowing what sky to choose. How to make it match the overall scene of your image. And I think we've done a fairly good job of this so far. I am going to take that warming filter and just adjust it just a little bit, just for my liking, add a little more to it. I like, I tend to like warmth in these images. Okay, another thing you may want to think about, this image does not call for it, but in future references, if you have depth of field that falls off around the mountains like I do here, this is all pretty sharp because it was photographed at such a high depth of field. If you do not have that, you might want to take a Gaussian blur on your cloud layer just to soften your clouds around the horizon where your depth of field falls off. Nothing's going to make an image look more unbelievable, and I mean unbelievable, not an awesome unbelievable, but as in not realistic, as this focus shifts throughout the image, um, exposure shifts throughout the image, or color shifts throughout the image. So these are all things that we can combat uh, when doing this technique. So at this point, I'm really happy. Um, what I might do now is take it into Nick or Topaz or On One Software, one of those plugins, maybe make fun, intensify, and bring out some details. But the key to that is you want to do any of that until you've got your sky nice and blended. You've got the exposures and the color looking the way you want it. So I'm not going to do that. That's for another tutorial. But what I am going to do is finish this off with just a little vignetting. And I'll show you how I vignette this image. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp all, which is Command Shift Option E. It merges all layers and puts it into a new layer on the top. 
And this is where I could start doing some finishing techniques and blurs or whatever. Still have my layers underneath, but I have um, it stamped. And I'm going to go to another layer cake file in my geese. They have all these bird files that are already cut out. And if you've been to one of our Find Your Focus workshops, you know that birds make all your images look better. Just gives a nice interest to it. So I'm going to drop in some birds here that are way too big. These are nice. They're already cut for you. They're, um, they're masked. So it's really great. So I'm just going to bring in some birds. Just a little bit of compositional element. And these flying geese. Important to make sure your scale is right. I think that's a pretty good scale. And I'm going to put a layer mask on this. And I'm going to get rid of a few of those birds. I didn't like these birds back here hanging around. So I'm just going to mask them out. But just adding the birds there is a nice touch to it. Now I'm going to do my vignette. And I do that with brightness and contrast layer. Adjustment layer. I bring my brightness way down. My contrast up. And actually I like, I like that there. I'm going to duplicate this. And now select my lasso tool with the L. And do a feather pixel of about 300. I want to reset your palette so your, your color palette is white at the top. Okay, so I'm going to reset my palette so I have white, and I'm just going to circle the focus of my scene, which is this barn. Need a little bigger, let's see. Okay, that looks nice, and I can hit delete, and it just puts a layer mask on that. I'm going to duplicate it with Command-J, and do a bigger circle. Hit delete again, and then do it again, and just kind of cover where just the edges are going to be shown. And what that allows me to do is it just kind of kind of gives you a nice fade of that vignette. It seems to be a really natural gradient there. And then you can go back and adjust the layers, the um, sorry, the opacity or the intensity of these layers to make that fit the way you like the image to look. So I think that's looking really sharp right there. I'm just going to bring that down just a little bit. And let's go and adjust my levels just a bit more here. Right there. Now I think we've got an image that's going somewhere, but my curves is slight bit. Now it's looking sharp right there. Let's bump those curves. So now we really have an image that's coming together. Believable sky. Let's go back to where we started. Started with this. Nice image. Then we added our sky. Remember we did our levels, photo filter, and curves on it to have every layer hit with the same adjustment to make it believable. Added our birds and then did the vignette to finish it. So once again, this is Chris Duncan with Find Your Focus Photographic Education. I hope this little tutorial here is a nice way to help you enhance some of your landscape images, some of your portrait images. I add skies to a lot of my exterior architectural images and it just adds some interest to those photographs, makes them really believable, uh, gives depth and texture to an image and really just sets it apart from maybe what someone else would go do. Uh, gives it a little more professional finish. So I hope this has been helpful and can't wait to see what you create. Thanks so much for watching.